there. Today we're going to look at the Law of Signs. And you should have done, learned the Law of Signs in previous classes, so we kind of will review it today, assuming you sort of know it. And the basic Law of Signs is really super easy to use. Um, to use the Law of Signs, you need to know at least one side. And if you know the measure of one side, and then any other two parts, like two other sides or two angles or maybe one angle and one side. you got to know three things, but one of them has to be a side. Then the Law of Signs is going to work for you. Now, like I said, basically the Law of Signs is super simple as long as there is just one solution. But because there's other options, sometimes there'll be no solution or sometimes there's two different solutions, that makes it a little bit trickier and that's probably where we'll focus most of our attention. Now, up to now, we've focused a lot on right triangles, and we've done a lot with Sokotoa. If we're solving a triangle, that means find all of its missing parts, then we use Sokotoa, but that only works on a right triangle. Today, we're going to focus on oblique triangles, and oblique triangles are basically just non-right triangles. Before I jump in and do the law of signs, though, I want to look at just an area problem. So what I've given you here is a nice oblique triangle, triangle ABC. And because it's oblique, we don't really know what to do with it. That's why I'm going to drop the altitude. The altitude of a triangle is always dropped perpendicular. What I've gained by dropping the altitude is two separate right triangles. And since they're right triangles, then I can do Sokotoa. Let's look at one scenario. I'm going to look at this triangle over here on the left. And look at what I've written here. It says the sine of angle A, the sine of angle A, well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's where I've got my H over C. Now, let's look at this triangle that's on the right side. This is another right triangle. And I look at angle C again. And I have the sine of angle C is opposite over hypotenuse. That's where I've got H over A. And just doing a little bit of algebra here, what I could do is I could take both sides on this one times C, and basically I have C times the sine of angle A is equal to H, which is this height here. But I could also multiply both sides by A on this one, and I'd have A times the sine of angle C is equal to H, and H is still H. It's still this height right here. What that means, then, is if I were to try to find the area of my oblique triangle ABC, recall from middle school the area of a triangle is one-half the base times the height, which works great if you know the height. But a lot of the time, since you're working with this triangle, the height is a segment that's inside of the triangle, and sometimes we don't know that segment. But now I have two different options for the height measurement. So I'm going to use this formula right here to find the area of a triangle, except that instead of writing it's one half the base, which is this length down here, which happens to also be my little b, that's convenient, one half the base, and instead of multiplying it times the height, I'm going to multiply it times what the height is equal to. So I could multiply it times C sine of angle A. Now, I should have written, instead of A equals, because that can be deceiving, it's really area equals. That's not angle A, it's A for area. I could also say that the area is equal to 1 half the base. And I could use this formula right here, A times the sine of C. Either one of those would work as an area formula for a triangle. And it works great if you know a couple sides out of the triangle and you know one of the angles. And in fact, if you look at these two formulas, I don't want you to try to memorize these formulas. What I want you to notice is a pattern here. To find the area of a triangle, basically you're going to take one half and then you're going to multiply two of the sides. And then you're going to take it and multiply it times the sine of the other angle. Notice this is an A and a B, so I used angle C. 
This is a C and a B, so I used angle A. Likewise, there's actually a third formula, and if you look in your textbook, they give you all these formulas. Don't try to keep track of all of them. Just understand the pattern that goes on with it. One half, you're going to multiply two sides. So this time I'm going to multiply side, um, oops, didn't write that very nice, side A times side C. That's two sides. And then I'd have to take it times the sine of the other angle, sine of B. All of those formulas would work great to find the area of an oblique triangle. Part of your assignment, you'll be just doing that, just using the area formula. They'll give you exactly what you need, two sides and the other angle. You just plug it in and go find it. One thing to make note of that um, today, as we do the law of sines or as we do these area formulas, we're dealing with triangles, kind of like triangles that we had in geometry, and all the angle measures are in degrees. Make sure as you work today that your calculator is in degree mode. Let's just practice doing that area formula real quick. I have a side length of 90 and a side length of 52, and then I have an angle of 102 degrees. Notice that I have two sides and the other angle. Now, yes, these are my three formulas, but I don't even get caught up in that. Just write area equals 1 half. You multiply the two sides. That's going to be 90 times 52 times the sine of the other angle. Since this was A and this was B, I have to use angle C, which conveniently is given to me. And you just type that in your calculator left to right. I get an area measurement of 2,288.9. And since it's area, we always write our units squared. That's how easy that formula is. Now let's go back to our oblique triangle. Same picture, same setup. When you drop the altitude, you can create these two little equations. And just like last time, I can take both sides times the denominator to get a value for h. But what that means, since h is equal to c times the sine of a, but on this other equation, h is equal to a times the sine of c. What that means is those two would have to be equal, regardless of what h is equal to. In one equation, I'm saying h is equal to c sine a. The other equation, I'm saying it's a times the sine of c. So those must be equal to each other. And then I'm going to do a little bit of algebra to do some rearranging on some things. I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of c, but actually as I do that I'm going to also divide both sides by the sine of a. And look at what I get when I do that. The sine a's cross and I'm left with c over the sine of c, which is going to be equal to on this one, I'm going to have a over the sine of a. Does this start to look familiar to you from in previous classes, this is your law of sines that we've got. And actually, if I had rearranged that triangle and made it look differently, I could have used different letters and I would have ended up with a B over the sine of B. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the law of sines. It sets up a proportion. We won't use all three fractions. We will pick two of the fractions and set up a nice proportion to solve for missing parts of a triangle. Let's try an example here. I've got our law of sines written up here. And like I said, we're going to use two of these fractions and set up a proportion. Which fraction? Just depends on what's given to me. It looks like I have angle A, I have angle B, and I have little c. Unfortunately, to write a proportion, I'm going to have to know two of the same letter and then one of a different letter. That would set me up with three pieces of information and I'd be searching for the fourth in that proportion. Unfortunately, I have three different letters. One of the things though from geometry, you gotta remember that the angles in a triangle always add up to 180. And since I know angle A and I know angle B, then I can find angle C. 
and I'm going to write this over here on the far right. Angle C, if I take 180, subtract the 38, subtract the 62, I would get 80 degrees for angle C. Once I know that, I can use it here. I've got little c is 15. Let's go find the b's and the a's. My first proportion I'm going to set up, I'm going to use the b's and the c's. I have little b, which is what I'm going to be looking for because I don't know that, over the sine of angle b, which is 62 degrees. And that's going to be equal to little c, which I know is 15, over the sine of angle C, which I now know is 80 degrees. And you're just going to do cross products in this. And uh, I would like to see this proportion that I just have written here. I want to know that you know what numbers go where. As far as how much work you show from there, it's kind of up to you. Basically, what you're doing is multiplying cross products. You're multiplying this direction, setting it equal to this direction. I've got 15 times the sine of 62 is going to be equal to b times the sine of 80. Which means to find that little b, I'm going to be dividing by the sine of 80. Just type this in your calculator, 15 sine of 62. Be sure to close your parenthesis on that 62 before you divide by the sine of 80. You should get a b value of 13.45. That's the second piece of information that was missing that we need to find, 13.45. Notice that they gave us three things, and then we're going to always find three things. So I have one more missing piece. I have all three angles. I have a little c, I have a little b, I'm missing little a. Let's set up the law of sines again, this time looking for a. Little a over the sine of 38, because that's angle a, is equal to, and I'm going to go back to my C's because that's what I know both of. I have little c and I have angle c. Let's do our cross products again. There, sorry, let me... 15 times the sine of 38 would be equal to A times the sine of 80. I'm going to have to divide both sides by the sine of 80. Type that in your calculator. You get 9.38 for side A. And we have all the missing parts. We've got our solution for our triangle. To solve the triangle, remember, means to find all the missing parts. Now, if all the problems were set up just like that one, it'd be easy peasy and no problems. Unfortunately, remember way back at the beginning, I said that sometimes there will be no triangle and sometimes you might have two different triangles. That's where it gets tricky. We call that, well, okay, so let's focus on the two triangle thing for right now. It's called the ambiguous case. And if you go back to geometry, when you did proofs, don't groan, I know, I know. Okay, so the, the proofs that probably were maybe the easiest ones were the ones where you had to prove two triangles congruent. And you could prove triangles congruent by side, 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 or side, angle, side, and you all had all these methods. But there was that one method that didn't work, and I have it written as side, side, angle. You may have learned it as angle, side, side. And probably your geometry teacher just told you it spells a naughty word, so you can't use that one. Well, that, that's a nice little trick to remember that it doesn't work. That's not really the reason it doesn't work. Today, you probably didn't get into it in geometry, but today we're going to need to know sort of why angle side side doesn't work. If I have an angle measurement and two side measurements, that is not enough information to guarantee that two triangles would be congruent to each other. Let's look at an example and see. Okay, and before I get ahead of myself, okay, so there's three possibilities. 
when you are given side-side angle. Now, if they gave you what I had on the previous one, where I gave you two angles and a side, there's, there's no problems. So you're just going to do your law of sines. We're going to specifically talk about when it's side-side angle or angle side-side. Now, for you to be given an angle side-side situation, that's the ambiguous case, angle side-side, it has to look like this here, where you have an angle right down here, and then as you wrap around the triangle, here's a side measurement, and then here's another side measurement. It's not the same as doing like a side angle side. It has to wrap around the triangle in that order. Here's my angle, my side, and my side. For there to be a situation where there are zero triangles, they're going to have to give you an angle measurement, and then a side measurement, and then another side measurement, and this side is going to be so short that it doesn't quite reach the end, and it doesn't actually create a triangle. Now the question becomes, how short is too short? Well, you don't necessarily always know, and you just kind of jump in and you do your law of um, signs, and what's going to happen is you'll end up getting an error message right off the bat. The first time you try your law of signs, you'll get an error on your calculator, and that's going to be your clue that this side was too short, and you're going to say, uh-oh, this one doesn't work, there are no solutions, there are no triangles created. And it's as simple as that. Now let's look at a scenario, still an angle side side, where there would be one triangle created. This would have been what we had found earlier, it would be a situation where, well, I take that back, because I did not give you angle side side earlier. But there's still only going to be one solution. Here you go, you've got your angle, you've got your side measurement that's given, and then they're going to give me another side. That side is going to be, come down here and be just long enough to reach the bottom. That zero triangle, it wasn't long enough. It might be just long enough that it's going to create a right triangle. Okay, that'd be one triangle scenario. Another scenario would be that this other leg is super long, and it stretches way, way out here, and it creates a nice little triangle right there. That'd be a second scenario. But this has to be pretty long for that to happen. And in fact, it has to be longer than what this leg over here is. And I'll kind of show you why that is in our third scenario where there's two triangles. Here's the third angle side side possibility. It might end up being with that information that you could create two different triangles. And this is the real reason why you didn't use it in geometry to prove two triangles congruent. If they give me an angle measurement, let's say it's this one right here, whatever it is, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, I don't know. They give me a side length here. I don't know how long it is, maybe 10 units or something like that. But then this third side is maybe like seven units. And so then it's going to kind of stretch out here somewhere, and it's going to make this nice triangle. There we go. There's our triangle. But here's the problem. I could also, with my leg over here that is seven units long, have taken that seven unit side length and gone this direction with it. And that still would create a triangle that has this angle measurement, because it would be here, and it would still have this long seg, well, we said maybe 10 units or whatever, and it would still have this side, which is 7. And yet it's a totally different triangle than my first one that I gave you, which was this one here. That's what's going to happen, is there's a possibility that you have, with those three pieces of information, you could actually draw two different triangles. Now for what we're doing, we're trying to solve the triangle, which means find the missing parts. And what this means is that I actually have two triangles then that I'm going to have to solve. Now before we jump in and do an example, let's kind of summarize where we stand. Here's our law of sines. You can use the law of sines if you don't have a right triangle, and you are given, well, you basically need to have, remember, a matching set of letters so you could create the proportion, or at least be able to get a matching set of letters. When you're given matching letters, or can get matching letters.
Remember, that means that they might give you two angles, and you can find the third angle, which maybe might end up being your matching letters that you need. And if they give us that, you know, you're going to be fine. Just jump in, do your law of signs. You're, it all works like a dream. The only thing, though, that you have to be looking out for is what if they give you an angle side side situation? If they give you an angle side side, these are your three possibilities. No triangle is formed. You're going to know that because you got an error on your calculator when you did your law of signs. One triangle is formed, or possibly two triangles are formed. I'm going to focus on looking at the two triangles, and then we might come back to this slide and, and add in when is it going to be a one triangle, when is it going to be a two triangle. Let's look at this one. Do I have matching letters? Yep, I do. That means I'm gonna to get to do the law of signs. It's gonna work for me. Now, does it happen to be the ambiguous case? Is it an angle side side? Well, there is an angle and there are two sides, but remember that could also be, instead of angle side side, it might be side angle side. For it to be angle side side, let's look at that picture that I've drawn several times. You always, always, always want to take the angle that they give you and put it in this bottom left corner. That's going to be angle A for us. That's what they gave us. And then this goes up here so far. I don't know how far. But that's going to be one of the sides that they give us. And then the other side is going to be this one over here. What's going to happen for this to be angle side side, this side here is always across from your angle which means in this case it's going to be little a. And this third piece right here could be a b or a c, it doesn't matter. But what I'm point, trying to point out here is that for it to be angle side side, angle side side, you're always going to have the angle and the side that matches. If you have that, it's going to end up being an angle side side. If you do not have matching letters, then it's going to be a side angle side and it's going to be a whole different situation. So when you're checking, and you could write this on that previous slide, how are you going to know that it's angle side side? Be wary of it. You're going to know because you have matching letters. And if you look here, I have matching letters. That just puts me on alert to say, okay, this is the ambiguous case. Weird things might happen. But I typically kind of jump in and I go ahead and start my law of signs. I'm going to do my matching letters, 12 over the sine of 55 is equal to 15 over the sine of angle B. Now when I do my cross products here, I'm going to have 15 times the sine of 55 equals 12 times the sine of B, and I'm going to divide both sides by 12. Again, this step right in here, if you can do that kind of in your head, like when I was young, we learned you cross multiply and divide, and then you're left with the unknown. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm cross multiplying, divide by the other piece of information, and I'm going to be left with this sine of B. When I divide this out, I get 12.29 equals okay sorry equals the 12 times the sine of b and then I'm going to divide by the 12. Okay when I divide by the 12 I end up with 1.02 equals the sine of angle b. This one's a little bit different than our previous one. I was looking for side measurements and my answer was just sitting there. On this one what I'm left with is the sine of b. To find just angle b I have to do inverse sine. At this stage, anytime you're looking for the angle, now you do inverse sine of 1.02. If you type that in your calculator, go ahead and do that. Inverse sine, 1.02. Have you been waiting for me to do all the math here? You should be doing this along with me so that you are getting the practice of having it actually happen to you. But if you type this in your calculator, you should be getting an error message. The reason you're getting an error message is because a sine value can never be greater than 1, and I'm sitting here looking at a 1.02. Now, so I might have noticed it here. I'm not going to necessarily notice it up here so much. Um, this is going to be the one where there's no triangle. 
that means that this angle or this side A, this 12, must not have been long enough to actually quite reach. I drew it there, but it must not be long enough to quite reach because my angle A is 55, so that kind of stretched up there a little bit higher. Maybe A just wasn't long enough to reach down. Either way, I got an error message, so this is a no triangle situation. Here we go. Let's do another example here. I am given three pieces of information. I have an angle and two sides, and since I have matching letters, it's going to be angle, side, side. Let's try setting this up real quick. Every time that you draw this, an angle, side, side, you want to take the angle that is given to you and put it over here on the far left. So this is angle C. didn't quite reach, sorry, that's kind of ugly. All right, so that's angle C, which means this is gonna be side C over here on this end, and it must mean that this one here is side B, and if that's side B, this must be angle B across from it, which leaves me with angle A up top. That's the triangle I'm looking for. But since it's an angle side side scenario, it is possible that I have a second triangle. But I'm going to start off and just treat it like it's normal, and I'm going to run it through and find the first triangle. Because I might end up with an error anyway, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. Let's set it up. I'm going to do my C's, because that's what I know. 125 over the sine of 25 is equal to 150 over the sine of angle B. Do your cross products. I'm going to take, and I'm going to do this, and I'd like you to do it in your calculator as we go. You're going to take 150 times the sine of 25, and then let's just write what we get. And that's going to equal 125 times the sine of B. Divide both sides by the 125. So in your calculator, you're just dividing by 125. You should get a 0 0.51 equals the sine of angle B. I like that it's less than 1 because now I'm going to do inverse sine 0.51 or probably second sine, second answer is how you're going to type that in. And for angle B, we should have 30.47. That's the first thing that we've found there is the, the missing angle. That's this angle over here on the far right here that we found. But since we already know angle C, because that was given, we should be able to find angle A by just subtracting from 180. 180 minus the 30.47 minus the 25. Gets us 124.53. The other thing that's missing would be little a. They didn't give us little a up here. And now that we have angle a, we can set up a law of sines to find it. I'm going to go back to my c's because that was given. 125 over the sine of 25 is equal to little a over the sine of 124.53. I do my cross products. Looks like I'm going to multiply this together in my calculator. And then I'm going to end up having to divide by the sine of 25 to get little a. And we have little a as 243.6. That is ugly. Let me rewrite that. 243.67. And that worked great. There's my triangle. The only thing is, remember that it was an angle side side, so there is potentially a second triangle. Since the first triangle works so nicely, maybe the second triangle will too. Let's look at what that second triangle is going to do. Angle C still has to be 25. That still has to be there. This side B right here still has to be 150. That's not going to change. And this third side is still going to be a 125. The only thing is that instead of it swinging over to the right side, it might have come over and swung this direction. It's still 125, but it just it comes over here. I'm going to work on seeing if this second blue triangle here would actually work. 
for this to work, this this side here, this side C, has to be, number one, has to be long enough to even reach the other side, which, since the first triangle worked, I know is the case. The other thing that you would have to be aware of, or that you would want to have happen with that side C, is you wouldn't want it to be super long. If it was super long, and it stretched way, 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 way out here, there's no way that it could swing to the left side because it would swing past this leg before it would ever come down and it would reach the other side. That right there is the trick, and this might be what you want to add in on that previous slide, is how do you know there's going to be a second triangle? This leg here, which is the little letter that is across from the angle given. In this case, they gave me angle C. I'm talking about side C. Side C here would need to be shorter than this other side. If it's longer, it's only going to reach out to the right side way far out there, and I'm going to have my one triangle, and I'm going to be done. But if this side, the side that's going to swing over the other way, if it's shorter than this side, so in this case, if C is shorter than B, then I know that I'm going to have that second triangle. All right. If the match, so how would you write that? Probably this is what I'd write. If the matching side, if or the the side across from the angle, however you want to write that, if that is shorter than the adjacent side, this is your adjacent side, then you'll have that second triangle. It works out in this one perfectly to have the second triangle. All right, so ignore my black line there. That's not going to be the case. I'm going to work on the blue triangle. The three pieces of information have not changed. Those are going to stay the same. Jumping in and doing the law of signs isn't going to give me anything different than here. There's a little bit of geometry that you have to see here. Remember that this side here is the same as this side. Those lengths are the same. Whether you write it there or you write it there, they are the same length. They are both 125, which makes this triangle here a nice little isosceles triangle. If those are both 125, then not only are those legs the same, but these two base angles are the same. And we conveniently have an angle B measurement. It's 30.47. It goes right there, which means this right here would have to be 30.47. Let's do some sort of a mark in your, in your notes so you recognize that these two angles are going to be the same. The problem is that this 30.47 isn't really part of my blue triangle. But it does happen to be a linear pair with this angle, which is in my blue triangle. So remember from geometry, a linear pair, two angles that form a line, have to be supplementary because they form this straight line. I can find this angle right here by subtracting this from 180. And that will give me the first new piece of information for my triangle. This is, a, this is still considered angle B, but because it's a different B, it's from a second triangle, I'm going to call it B prime. And I can find B prime by taking 180, and I'm just writing this, I probably won't typically write it, but I'm going to write it for the sake of notes. I'm going to take 180 minus 30.47. I have a 149.53 degree angle for my second triangle. Now if I change angle B, then that means my angle A up here, up top, is now going to be different. Let's find A prime. I'm going to take 180. I'm going to subtract angle B and subtract angle C. 180 minus 149.53 minus 25 gets me a 5.47. That's a pretty tiny angle. That's actually relatively common to have a pretty small angle measurement up here because this leg is swinging back and sometimes it has to swing pretty far which shrinks this angle. If you go through this problem and you find your, your 
B prime, and then you go find A prime, and this is a negative angle. What that means is this leg has to swing so far over here that it basically eliminates angle A. Well, that's going to happen if this leg is longer than this leg. If you don't catch it up here and say, oh wait, this is too long, and you go ahead and you jump in and do your second triangle, you're going to catch it right here because this is going to end up being negative, and you're going to bail. You're going to say, whoa, that's not doesn't make sense. I must not have a second triangle, and I'm done with my first triangle. However, that did not happen to us here. We have an angle measurement. We're good to go. Let's keep on going. The only thing missing is little a. This is little a prime right here. Let's find that measurement. It's going to be much shorter than my original a was. I'm going to go back to my law of sines, and I'm going to go to my c's, because those have not changed. 125 over the sine of 25 equals little a prime over, and now I'm going to use my new angle A. That's where I'm going to get something different this time over the sine of 5.47. Okay, do your cross products. Multiply here. Divide by the sine of 25. And you get A prime to be 28.19. And that's our second triangle. It's kind of nice if you notate this is your second triangle. Now, it wouldn't be a bad idea. I know that slide took a while, but it might be good to kind of go through that one more time. Watch that again. This is the tricky part. Law of signs most of the time is fine. That second triangle is kind of wormy. So maybe give it another view before you come in and just ask me to do all the second triangle ones in class tomorrow. Watch it again. Give it a shot. Now this slide is actually for another practice problem. I'm just going to let you watch that other video one more time. And if you want to do this one as a practice for yourself, you can. I'm going to actually just use this slide as a quick summary page. The first thing, remember at the very beginning, we were doing the area formula. The area of a triangle is always one half. Two of the letters, pick a couple letters, doesn't matter, whichever ones they give you, two letters times the sign of the opposite letter. They typically will give you exactly what you need, you just plug it in. Okay. The next thing was just basically doing your law of signs. Know that formula. Be able to do the law of signs. Some of the time, law of signs is normal. Some of the times, it's going to be the ambiguous case where they give you angle side side. Remember, on the angle side side ones, then you have to always be aware of what's going on. If it's not angle side side, you just go solve the triangle. If it's angle side side, you might get an error message, which means there's zero triangles. You might run it through and just get one triangle, and the second triangle doesn't work. Or if that opposite leg is shorter, then you might end up with two triangles. You have some options. There is one other thing that I want you to be aware of that they start throwing at you is a nice little geometry review. The triangle inequality theorem. This might be in your notes. It might not be. The triangle inequality theorem. This is from geometry. And it's the thing that says that if you have one side that's your longest side, whatever it might be, if this is my longest side, I'm just going to make it be 20. The sum of the other two legs, these are the other two legs, have to add up to be more than that third leg. So if this one happens to be 12, this one over here is going to have to be greater than 8. Think about that for a second. If this was only 8 and this was 12, Think about at what point they would actually touch, because of the 8 plus a 12 is 20, and they wouldn't ever really touch. They would come down until they kind of touched, and it would form a straight line. This has to be bigger than 8, so that these two add up to be more than that. Uh, you might just do something like A plus B has going to have to be greater than C, where C is the longest side. All right, that should get you through your homework. Good luck.